Okay, we have here today another interesting integral from the MIT integration B from 2006. This was problem five. We have the integral of one minus sine x over one plus sine x dx. Okay, looking at the fact that we have one plus sine x in the denominator, this makes me think it might be a good case for a half angle substitution. But in this case, I didn't do it that way. What I actually did was, what I actually did on this was just multiply the conjugate in the numerator and denominator. So let's see how that looks if I multiply this by one minus sine x over one minus sine x. Then let's just distribute everything in and see what happens. So in the numerator, I'm going to distribute it all the way out. So we're going to have one. The middle term is going to be minus two sine x. And then minus sine x times minus sine x gives me a plus sine squared x. And then in the denominator, if we multiply this out, we get one minus sine squared x. But I'm going to use an identity on that. I'm just going to rewrite that as cosine squared x. But now what I can do, now that we've got three different terms that we're adding or subtracting, I can break this up into three integrals and divide in the cosine squared. So let's see how this is gonna look. When I divide one by cosine squared x, I can just write this as secant squared x. Then here I'll bring a minus two out front. Sine over cosine squared x, I can actually break that up. Sine over cosine is tan x. But then I'm gonna have another cosine in the denominator. I'll just write that, bring that up and write that as secant x. And of course, I'm forgetting my dx's, so let's add dx here. And then for the last one, we're going to have sine squared x over cosine squared x. I can write that as just tan squared of x. But now for tan squared x, what I can do is I can break that up using an identity. I can write tan squared x. I can write this as secant squared x minus 1. But now notice if I break this into two integrals, and we have four integrals, we already are, we're already integrating secant squared x here, and we have the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this one because it's duplication, but I'll bring a two here just to show us that we have two copies of this integral. But then all the way left here is this minus one, so we're just integrating minus one for this last integral here. But now at this point, we've got three really easy integrals, so we'll just integrate to finish it off. So for this first one, integral of secant squared x gives me just tan of x minus two. Integral of tan x times secant x, this is gonna be just secant x. And integral of minus one, that's just gonna be minus x plus c, and that's it. Now, before we finish up, one note on the solution. This is fine, and this actually matches the MIT solution, but there is one problem. And when we look at the domain of this, going back to our original integral, there is a little bit of a problem in the denominator here, right? Because let's say when x is going to be, when x is 3 pi over 2, then sine of x, sine of 3 pi over 2, is then minus 1. Well, then at that point, we're dividing by 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have a problem at 3 pi over 2. So in the original problem, we can say, okay, just x is not equal to 3 pi over 2. So just notice in our solution, tan x is sine x over cosine x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. So let's just focus on secant for a second. So for 1 over cosine x, when x is 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to be dividing by 0 as well. But that's okay because we already excluded it in our original problem. The issue really is that x equal to pi over 2 you'll notice at pi over two, the original problem is fine because sine at pi over two, that's gonna just be one. So we have two in the denominator. So when x is pi over two, the original problem is fine. So coming down to our solution, if we have secant at pi over two, or let's say one over cosine pi over two, well, again, we're dividing by zero here. So now in our solution, we've added an extra problem. We're saying x can't be equal to pi over two. So therefore the domain of our solution is not the same as the original problem. So ideally we clean this up and get it to something that has the same domain as our original problem. One thing before I go ahead and clean this up is you'll notice this is actually the very first step is where we introduce the problem because here when we multiply it in one minus sine x, in this case we can't have x equal to pi over two because then we're dividing by zero there. So basically what I wanna do is just get rid of or undo what we did here somehow. So I'm gonna work with this. So I'm gonna do a we'll factor of two out. We have two on both these, so I can write this as two tan x minus secant x, but I'll rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So we're gonna have sine over cosine minus one over cosine x. And I think let's just focus on this piece because this is where our whole problem is. So what I'll do is we have a common denominator now, so I'm going to put those together over here. So this is, I can write this as sine x minus one over cosine x. And then what I want to do, I want to bring this one minus sine x back into the problem somehow. I can do this by multiplying numerator and denominator by cosine x. 
then what's going to happen, we'll, I'll just rearrange this again, we'll have cosine x. I actually want to turn this numerator into 1 minus sine x, so I'm going to reverse the sine here, bring a minus out, and I'll write this as 1 minus sine x here. Then in the denominator, we're going to have cosine squared, but I'll rewrite that as 1 minus sine squared x. But then rewriting this again, what I'm going to do is I can factor this denominator. So 1 minus sine squared x, I can write this as 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. And so what happened, we basically, now we have this thing here that we multiplied in. We have this right here. So I can just take this, and now we'll just get rid of it and cancel it off to get us... But now by canceling this off, we've eliminated that problem. We've eliminated this problem at pi over 2. So we'll take this, we'll plug this back in here, but I'm going to distribute it in the 2. So I can write this as minus 2 cosine x over 1 plus sine x minus x plus c, and that's it. And now we no longer have a problem at pi over 2, and we've got the same domain as our original problem. So there you have an interesting problem from MIT 2006. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.